lift the motor and rotate the belt onto the pulley. Now with the motor installed and the bolt still loosened up here, we're going to put tension on the belt by pushing the motor down. That's done with this bolt right here. We're going to back this nut off a little ways. And this is a number 13. And we're going to use this bolt to push down on the tab to push the entire motor assembly down. And that'll put some tension on the belt for us. Now when you tension it for the first time, you want about a quarter inch deflection on the belt. Not too much pressure, but enough to, uh, to drive it. As you use the bandsaw for the first hour or so, you're going to notice that that belt loosens up a little bit. You may have to come back and apply a little bit of tension to it. So let's go ahead and run this down. First by hand. And then we'll put a wrench on it. And what you're going to do is put a little bit of tension on this one and watch the motors that start to go down. And then just feel the tension up in the front. And you want, like I say, about a quarter inch deflection or so in the belt itself. Check that in the front. It's pretty snug. I'm going to take just another turn on it. should be right about on. Fantastic. I've got about a quarter inch deflection. Now with the belt adjusted, I'll run this nut down to make sure that it doesn't back off. And we'll secure the motor, the motor plate right to the saw. Well, we've got the mobility kit installed, we've got the switch turned around, the motor's installed, and the belt's adjusted. We're almost ready to get the saw fired up, but we have to put a few more pieces on. The next component is the main table. It'll be labeled in the box that says main table on it. Go ahead and open that up, wipe it down, and get it ready to go. In order to get the saw ready, what you want to do is raise the upper guide post all the way up so that it's out of the way. This will give you plenty of room. The main tables can be heavy. On the 14, they're not too bad. On the 16 and 18, they get a little bit heavier, and you might want to have a friend help you to lift those on. We've got the trunnions wiped down. You might want to put just a little light coat of grease in there to let it slide back and forth very easily. Go ahead and get your table wiped down, ready to install. Let's go ahead and drop that in place. You're going to see two holes, one in front, one in back. The hand knob is going to go in the front. A bolt will go through the backside. As you lower the table down onto the saw, this half of the trunnion will match the other half of the trunnion. These bolts want to go right through the center of the trunnion, and then you can install the uh, nuts and the washers and the hand knobs right on the bottom side of the trunnion. Let's go ahead and take this over to the saw, and we'll carefully guide these two bolts right through the holes in the trunnion. Now you can see that these cast iron tables are heavily webbed on the bottom side, and these things get a little bit heavy. You might be able to install it by yourself. I like to do it with two people, particularly when you're trying to uh, negotiate these uh, bolts through the holes here. I'm going to get Dave to come over and help me out. We're going to lower this right down onto the table. On the back trunnion, it'll be a flat washer, a lock washer, and a lock nut. We'll simply put those up and get those snug into place. That's going to be a number 17. I like to get this one snug but not tight. That way the table can still tilt and you set just enough pressure so that doesn't move around and you'll get the feel of it once you have it installed. Now, the table is ready to tilt. It still feels a little bit heavy. Let's go ahead and get the gas strut installed, and that'll make it a little bit easier to tilt the table. Now, I typically will install the top first. I'll put the pin in, slide it through the hole, and install the pin on the back side. That way it can hang on the table, just like this. Go ahead and tilt the table all the way up to the 45 degree position. Lock the front knob so that it doesn't come back down on you. And now you can come down and put the lower one on a little bit easier. On the lower bracket, simply install the pin into the bottom of the part of the gas shock and give it a little bit of compression up. And as it comes back down, you'll slide it into the hole and then simply put the lock pin in the back side. And that's ready to go. Now we can unlock the handle and then tilt the table down with ease. 
you'll see that that gas strut really makes it much easier to raise and lower when that's in place. So now we've got the motor installed and the table installed, and those are two heavy components. One note right now is that many people like to take the band saws and put them in various spots. In my shop, it's just a simple rolling into the garage, but for many of you, the bandsaw might go into the basement. The table installation and the motor installation that we've just done right here, those might be steps you'd want to take after moving it into a basement. If you have to move your bandsaw into an unusual location where you might have to lift or carry the bandsaw, again, do it with a couple of people and do it with components. Leave the table off, disconnect the motor. Now, you might have to undo a little bit of wiring on the motor to remove it from the bandsaw, but you want to have the weight of the motor off. You want to have the weight of the table off. One of the things that you can also do is to open the doors up and they simply lift straight up and will pop off the saw and you've got the weight of the doors, both the upper and lower doors, and those simply go straight up and off the saw. That'll reduce the weight, makes it a little bit easier for you to move your bandsaw into location. Now the next step is to take your rip fence and install it on the saw. It'll simply slide on the front shaft right here. And you might want to wiggle it a little bit to get it on there the first time. And then once that's on, it should slide back and forth. It'll come set from the factory pretty square. We're going to do a complete drift adjustment on that in just a few minutes when we put the blade on, but we want to have this on right now. Oh, and you notice, it seems like my plug is in the way. When I install a blade on the bandsaw, I want to make sure that my saw is unplugged. And so you'll see the cord up and on the top here during the blade installation. Once the blade is on, I'll simply plug the saw in and I'm ready to go. Now one of the things we want to do before putting the blade on is to adjust the throat plate. And the throat plate has four screws in each corner here and that allows us to go ahead and get it leveled off and to make sure that when we put wood through the saw that it doesn't catch on the front edge or the back edge as it's going through. So let's go ahead and you'll just do this by feel. Run your hand over it and run the screws in so that you get the throat plate set to the level that you need it to be. That front feels pretty good. If you want to put a straight edge across this you can. Typically you can feel that it's level and that you don't catch a fingernail on it as you're sliding through. One more corner here. And that's good to go on all four corners. 